All right, welcome in to another day of our daily devos in the Psalms. Pastor Rick here, and we are ready to rock and roll another day in the Word of God in the book of Psalms. We are in Psalm 83 today, and so we're just going to jump right in. This is actually the the final psalm by this fella here, Asaph, and so uh, just it'll be kind of interesting as we continue to progress through Psalms as we've been kind of in the Psalms of Asaph for a, for a bit here to see if, you know, like just the, the tone or the flavor of the Psalms shifts a little bit. Um, so just kind of, you know, keep an eye on that and just kind of see uh, if you notice stylistic differences because we'll have a different author um, moving forward into a lot of other Psalms. So let's go ahead and jump in to verse one. God Do not keep silent. Do not be deaf, God. Do not be quiet. See how your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you uh, have acted arrogantly. Um, So interestingly, here in the first verse, God, do not keep silent. Do, Do not be deaf, God. Do not be quiet. Is that these are all uh, factors of other gods that people around them served like other nations around Israel served um, idols and all kinds of stuff and you know they they were unable to speak um, unable to act as they're just uh, you know false gods that they were serving and and so Asaph is saying God don't don't be like their gods don't don't be quiet don't be deaf don't be silent Because they are acting arrogantly against you and making an uproar. In verse 3, they devise clever schemes against your people. They conspire against your treasured ones. And they say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation so that Israel's name will no longer be remembered. So these people uh, had some dastardly goals in mind and uh, were not exactly friendly, you know, and... So, for they have conspired with one mind, they form an alliance against you. Because, honestly, the the covenant that God had made with Israel was that they would continue on. And so, an affront against Israel was an affront against God. And so, them saying, come, let's wipe them out as a nation so that they will no longer be remembered. They're coming against they're coming against Yahweh himself because Yahweh said, hey, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect you. I'm going to keep you. You're going to be my people. I'm going to be your God. And we're, we're going to do this thing. And it's going to keep on going. It's going to keep on lasting. And so they're conspiring against Yahweh himself. Bad plan. You know, like that is a bad plan. The tents of Edom and the Ishmael. Mishmael. Yep, that was uh, not the word I expected to struggle with this morning. Uh, The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, uh, Gebel, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Even Assyria has joined them. They lend support to the sons of Lot. Deal with them as you did with Midian and as you did with Sisera and Jabin at the the Kishon River. They were destroyed at Endor and became manure for the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb and all their tribal leaders like Zeba and Zalmunna who said, let's seize God's pastures for ourselves. So anytime you're trying to take God's stuff for yourself, um, that's also a bad plan. And um, just so... Uh, dealing with them as you did with Midian uh, should hearken our minds back to a guy whose name actually rhymes with Midian. His name is Gideon, and um, and just how he he helped defeat the Midianites. And um, so, you know, I, I think that Gideon's story, uh, in case you wanted to check it out, that is not the right page. My bad. Um, Gideon is in Judges chapter six, and um, 
and so I just think that one, you know, when it, it's pretty well known when the angel of the Lord came to call Gideon in uh, six twelve, he said, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, the Lord is with you, valiant warrior. Um, but when he came to him, uh, he was threshing wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. So he was he was threshing wheat inside the wine press, which is not your best scenario for for threshing anything. And he was doing it because he was afraid. So he was hiding in fear. And the Lord, <laughs> the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, the Lord is with you, valiant warrior. Um, you know, with God, we can do all things. Uh, we can be things that we are not by ourselves. Um, we, we get to take on the identity that Christ chooses to give us. Um, most likely this angel of the Lord was a pre pre incarnation appearance of Jesus. So if Jesus comes to you and says, the Lord is with you, valiant warrior, that's what you are. Uh, but Gideon, Gideon said to him, please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened? And where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? And they said, hasn't the Lord brought us out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to Midian. Now, um, the, you know, and fair question, like it's good. It's good to ask the questions that are actually rolling around in your mind. Now, if you know the story of the book of Judges, it's just crazy cycles of rebellion against God going into basically slavery um, with other people as enemies would come in and dominate them um, so that then they would recognize, wow, life was better when we were serving God. And they would turn back to God. They would cry out to God. And so it's actually why Gideon's getting called here is because they cried out to the Lord. And uh, he picks he picks Gideon, um, you know, not not the person you would pick, you know, um, not the person you would pick at all. But God, God likes to pick people that kind of surprise you. <laughs> uh, so the Lord turned to him and said, go in strength. Go in the strength you have. And deliver Israel from the grass of Midian because I am sending you. If God's sending you, you're good. You know, the even go, he's, he says, go in the strength you have, um, which didn't seem sufficient. But because I'm sending you, then what you have is sufficient. Like God's going to God's going to make it stretch. God's going to make it work, you know. And um, and so we know uh, uh, most know that then. Gideon and his little army of about 300 soldiers, they took down the Midianites in a little bit unusual fashion, mind you, but God brought deliverance through Gideon in a situation that didn't seem possible. And it, and it was, I guess the other point I was going to say is, you know, here Gideon's asking questions like, uh, if you're with us, you know, why has all this happened? Well, Gideon, don't, don't you know about like the last, you know, 40 years they, they've been, they've been acting the fool against God. You know, they've been rebelling against God. They haven't been honoring him. They've been seeking other gods. And so this judgment from the Midianites is actually to draw them back to the Lord. So on that note, um, let's take a look at the last couple of verses of this okay. Psalm. It says in verse 13, make them like a, make them like tumbleweed, my God, like straw before the wind as fire burns a forest as a flame blazes through the mountains. So pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm, cover their faces with shame so that they will seek your name, Lord cover. So pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm and cover them with shame, cover, cover their faces with shame. So that they will seek your name, Lord. And, and that is what the Israelites had experienced themselves 
so they're actually praying like, hey, you know how you drew us back to yourself? Let's do that. Let's do that for our enemies. Because we know if they're if they're drawn to seek you, then they're gonna be they're gonna be better, they're gonna be healed, they're gonna be, you know, more righteous and kinder and all that stuff. And so I was appreciating as I was reading it this morning, you know, just like, wow, um, that's a really great way to pray for your enemies. Like, sure, sure, pursue them and, you know, let them sense the judgment of God against them, but do it in such a way that they end up seeking your name, Lord, that they end up finding salvation. Um, Let them be put to shame and terrified forever and let them perish in disgrace. May they know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high. And that that's, that's what we all need to know. That's the revelation that we all need to have. And so... May they know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over the whole earth. And that is kind of the, the, the end of the matter right there. You are the Lord, the most high over the whole earth. And we praise you and honor you and give you glory today, God. Lord, let every oper- let everything that you bring into our lives make it so that we will seek your name, Lord. Whether it's judgment, whether it's blessing, whether it's... Let it turn our hearts towards you, God. Let us always take the things that you give us and push it back to you in honor and glory because you're, you are the most high over the whole earth. Like, let us remember that today. Let us walk in that revelation today. And that way we won't fear our enemies that are coming after us that have maybe formed an alliance against us, that we can walk in confidence and boldness that we can be like Gideon, that even when God declares something over us that we have not known to be true about ourselves, that we're able to walk in faith and just simply obey him wherever he calls us. So God bless you. Have an amazing day today, and I will see you tomorrow.